the housing update for this month, April 2024. My dear friend, Randy Williams from TBF Mortgage. How are you? Good morning, Mary. We're going to jump right into it, Randy, you know, because everybody's interested in getting that Mm -hmm. and understanding what's happening. Now, we I don't ever use our words as a spring market down here because we've just come through high season. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do have a good summer season and it's spring everybody everywhere else. Um, Go ahead and read about what's happening with inventory. The inventory of homes actively for sale increased in 45 out of the 50 largest metros compared with last year. And in four large metros, inventory was above pre-pandemic levels. That's new. Mm -hmm. That's new for us because we've been having lots and lots of issues with not having enough inventory. For a long time. Right. And if you look at what's happened in change of inventory here in Florida, um, this chart we're the darkest one, we're seeing a plus 45%. Correct. You know, from year over year. Um, But what is Realtor.com? What are they saying? For the first three months of this year, the inventory of homes actively for sale was at its highest level since 2020. However, while inventory this March is much improved compared with the previous three years, it is still down almost 39% compared to the typical 2017-2019 levels. In March, as in the previous month, the growth in homes particularly priced in the 200000 to 350 range outpaced all other price categories, as home inventory in this range grew by 30.5% compared to last year. You know, that's a very affordable um, price point. We don't see tons and tons of those around here, but Cape huh. Coral, that's near their average, right. 380 or 390 somewhere in there, Fort Myers, Cape Coral. Mm-hmm. Um that inventory is moving. And now we're going into the summer market for us, which is a strong market in those areas. Um, but if we look at homes activity for sale increased in that 45 to 50 market range, not just the map that we were looking at before, but looking at it year over year, um, that gray line, the blue line, the darker blue line and the light blue line um, and the orange line, those are well above the dark green line here for 2024. Mm -hmm. So although we have more inventory, you know, the sky is not falling. Everything is not for sale. We're kind of moving back into a normal market. You you and I have both been doing this for a very long time and markets do shift. And when interest rates rise, things are going to happen. I think this would be more concerning if we had a normal level of inventory and we see it shot up. We didn't. Right. For a very long time, everybody was screaming, there's nothing for sale. There's nothing for sale. Right. So I think it's just starting to get to that normal range. And, you know, it was really bad for buyers because they had to forego inspection. They had to forego a lot of times their mortgage contingency. You know, they were putting up more money. I mean, buyers kind of got the short end of the stick with that low inventory. It wore everybody out. It wore the buyer's agent out or the buyers out. And I was, you know, sitting there writing a, n- a number of pre-approvals for buyers that were just trying to get into their first homes. And yeah, I think um, I think it's a positive thing that inventory is going to get to a normal level. I really do. I do too. And I love the fact that we're still not crazy above those yeah. years, but we're in the middle. So what is, we're, we're on a realtor.com day today. What is, what are those guys saying? Providing a boost to overall inventory, sellers turned out in higher numbers this March as newly listed homes were 15.5% above last year's levels. This marked the fifth month of increased listing activity after a 17 month streak of decline. Yeah. It shifted. Yeah. Yeah. It shifted. That's, yeah. that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, which I think from a standpoint, we really want to go down that path and understand this is a good thing. Right. I have buyers and sellers, all of them think, you know, Henny Penny, the sky is falling, Chicken Little. Yeah. What am I going to do? This is very normal. This is this is a healthy market, you know, in many of our markets. There's so much noise that you have to black out and focus on all, all of the things that are important. You have to have a good agent. You have to price your home properly. You know, all of those things that a normal market requires are, are back in place. Point. Yeah. So what's Doug Duncan saying who, at Fannie Mae? Consumer attitudes towards home selling conditions increased markedly in February with current homeowners in particular expressing greater optimism. That is a good time to sell a development that may foreshadow an upcoming increase in ex- existing home listings. Yeah. Yeah. It's just good. Yeah. So we've talked about inventory. That's good. Mm-hmm. Now it's near and dear your heart. What? Mm-hmm. Mortgage rates, baby. Let's talk about, yeah. let's talk, let's get me some mortgage rates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish I had a bunch of positive stuff to say. I mean, the Federal Reserve influenced mortgage rates, but it doesn't set them. And that's so true. As of March 20 of 2024, the central bank kept the federal funds rate unchanged and said they will keep an eye on economic developments to decide when the next rate rate will be. Mortgage rates are influenced by many elements, including inflation rate, 
job creation, whether the economy is growing or shrinking. The Federal Reserve's monetary policy is a factor, and it is set by the Federal Open Market Committee. Nerd wallet, their quote. They, they're listen. They've already said they're going to cut the rates. What they're doing right now, like they're really just trying to time it right. They, they're trying to look at all of the economic data that they can do. And like we've always said, there's something coming up in November that may have a large impact on what we see with mortgage rates. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're still a lot higher than they should be for the, you know, we've talked about in the past for the Treasury, mm -hmm. um, 30 year Treasury. I, I don't understand that, why we're so much higher other than they don't want to hit you back up in an increase if inflation goes up. We, I'm just so blessed, and, and so are you, that we we are dealing with a lot of people that have bought their 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th, 12th, 13th houses, and they understand mm -hmm. that rates will come back at, at a time, but it's cost right now that is really the truly the most important thing. And they are what they are. Yeah, They are what they are, and we have no control over it, but it does not, it should not affect a good investment in real estate. And if you need to move, let's face it, right. you need more space. So what's the latest Fed decision? This happened on March 20th. Th yeah. The committee decided to maintain the target range for the federal funds rate five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Okay. So that's where they are. We're starting to see some increases in interest rates right now. They're kind of bopping up and down, but what is Forbes saying? Current expectations are that the Fed will start to cut rates at some point between June and September. The exact timing depends on how incoming economic data looks. The Fed's March meeting did not set up a prospect of a near-term interest rate cut, but a summer cut appears likely. Which, remember this slide we had? We've had this slide forever and ever. Mm -hmm. um, last month, shockingly in March, fourth quarter had a five in the first digit. That little handler, as they say, um, or the handle. Um you know, we're now at a 6.2%. But what I love about this, yes, they're going up and they'll readjust again from the analysts, Fannie Mae, NBA, NAR, and their averages. But here's what we do know. Right now, demand is weak because our interest rates are somewhere in that six and a half, six point, you know, seven. And as we move up above 7%, it's really weak. So we have limited to weak. If we can get that back under six and a half or six, we're going to have really good to strong because we still have all this pent up demand that, you know, we need to, that people want to buy houses. They just haven't, they've, they've held off. Yeah. I mean, again, like, like we just talked about rates are determined by not just one or two things, but, but several factors, right. as long as we keep getting good jobs reports, as long as we keep getting inflation peeling back, as long as the stock market is doing what it's doing, as long as, you know, new mortgage applications are happening, what's the, what's the real incentive to start cutting. When all of those things start to go another way, they'll step in right away and they'll time right. it, right? right? So tell us what Lawrence Yoon said at the National Association of Realtors. Sure, housing demand has been on a steady rise due to population and job growth, makes sense. Yeah. Though the actual timing of purchases will be determined by prevailing mortgage rates and wider inventory choices. Exactly right. Right? Yeah. And let's face it, what <laughs> costs are and if I need to move and yeah. location to location, et cetera. Um, Odetta, what is she saying? When you zoom out, affordability is still very, very low from a historical perspective. Again, right. exactly right. And you're going to have to watch our affordability, um, really, Mary, because we're going to blow that up and, and give you a few more details on that. Um, but as we go through this home price forecast, Randy, mm -hmm. you know, the top, what is that? Seven, um, two, four, seven, yeah, seven. Analysts, Goldman Sachs, MBA, Zillow, Fannie, Freddie, um, et cetera, they're all saying the home price forecast is going to increase by 3.2% this year. Yeah. I mean, if you just, some of them are obviously a little bit more bullish, um, but the good thing is, is all, all of the ones that matter there are all still positive. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what's happening in Southwest Florida? Randy, I love this slide. We had it last month because we looked at year-over-year -year inventory. And I really over, so February, year-over-year, -year, um, we're still pretty flat, believe it or not. So I didn't want to recommit um, to this with Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Mark Island, and Naples. But I just wanted to remind everybody that we're still, some we're a little bit higher in Cape Coral than we were in 19. We're a little bit lower in Marco than we were in 19. We're lower you know, in Naples and we're about the same in Fort Myers. So, you know, then as we are comparing these inventory years, um, year over year for that month, right? But when you start to look at it, Randy, and you look at homes for sale, 
that that's an interesting thing because the numbers kind of come out a little differently. If I look at that bar as being March of 2020, mm -hmm. and I look at the homes for sale, it was a little bit less than, say, what is that overall Naples market was 6070 and it was 5882 in um, March of this year. But if you look at March or of, you know, in 2019, it was even higher. So we're seeing this dip down and then come back up. Uh, you know, not bad. Listen, pe people are always going to live in the past. And you, you just have to understand that March of 2020, there were so many things happening. 3% interest rates, COVID, so many things that there's nothing normal about that. So we have to get over it. Like yeah. we have to get past it and we have to look at today's market where we are now. And like I said, and, and you know, inventory is about normal. Interest rates are a little higher than they should be and they'll come back, but it's still always a good opportunity to invest in real estate. It's always better to pay a mortgage than rent. Totally. One last thought, homes sure. for sale overall, um, Naples market. So this isn't all of them just to give you a flavor. We are very much, you know, with what's happening nationally. If you yeah. look at that strong pinkish line for lack of a better that's where we are um, January through March. And then if we look at 19 and 20, again, they were higher. And then you look at um, the years that we went through, which we call them unicorn years. So inventory is coming back. But again, I like to bring this out because it does affect prices. It does affect sellers thinking, oh, my gosh, there's tons of inventory. It does affect buyers that are say saying the same thing and they want to put in really low offers or more importantly, what they're afraid of is that the market's going to fall and they're going to hold on to a house that is that they bought overpriced. Well, something that is near and dear to your heart, and I know because we've had several conversations, when the market starts to get more normal, there's been so much noise in the media today mm -hmm. about devaluing a real estate agent's importance. You know, mm -hmm. And if you're at a normal inventory level and getting back into a normal market, hiring a really great real estate agent, pricing that home properly, marketing it correctly, are the keys to your success right now. Yeah. 100%. You can't just put a sign in the yard anymore. Like you have to have a professional with good advice help you. And he said it here. So is it time to move? If it's your time to move, it's always time to move. And we here at the Bartos Group and TBF Mortgage hope we can be part of that process.